Howdy folks, we're with Gerard Middleton, the uh, proprietor Ooh. of Sur Soapy Surf and Stand Up Paddling. Uh, we're here to do some stand up paddling and uh, the resident Matthew McConaughey here at Cocoa Beach is going to teach us how. Can you do Matthew McConaughey? Can you? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, Let's all go. right. Let's take our shirts Look off, baby. Look, it's not you. crew of Just Down the Road decided we wanted to go just down the road in Cocoa Beach, Florida, where there's a million things to do. But the first two things we wanted to tackle was stand-up paddling and kayaking. So we began our first day in Florida at Sobe Surf and Stand Up with the world-famous Gerard Middleton. Here's how our supping adventure went. Sobe surf and stand up paddling, here we come. And I'm worried because I'm on this little teeny board and it's all about balance in the middle of the water, ocean, you know. Mm, and I thought, oh, of course, Diane, you can do it. You can do everything. <laughs> so of course I got up on the board and I supped. I did it well, it was great. When just down the road is out and about filming, usually all the female attention or eyes are pulled in one direction, right here. Uh, but today, Things were a little bit off as Gerard Middleton walks out. Literally, we're faced with this Matthew McConaughey Hollywood action star look-alike, and I notice the eyes are pointing in a different direction. That's okay. I mean, they've seen me. They're kind of used to me. A little new blood in the water. Uh, but to keep the playing field level and so as not to hurt Gerard's uh, feelings, I left my shirt on. That way, you know, he could have some attention and then I would get some and then he would get some and then he'd get a little bit more. Uh, mostly he had all of it. Gerard, washboard, cut, tan, Matthew McConaughey, <clears throat> sup advisor, <sighs> Middleton. Yep, that's him. I met him. So let me just say a few words about him. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Cut, Dan, washboard. Let's just call him washboard for short. You see. <laughs> so what are we going to do first, uh, Matthew or Gerard? Either one. What are we going to do first when we go out here so that we don't drown Diane? Although that would be good no, TV. It would. Ooh, I see how it is. Thank uh, you. Diane and Jeremy, first we're going to do a little ground school. Okay. We want to keep you safe, of course. Yeah. Especially while you're being filmed. We don't yeah, want I know. I look camera. stupid be bad. like a big donkey. So, We'll uh, get you schooled on how to be safe on the board and okay. in the water and such, and uh, then we'll teach you how to do it right. You know, there's a lot of good technique to it. And yeah. When you learn to paddle right and uh, think right and relax and be in good posture on your board. Posture. Stand up. Gerard Washboard is giving us instructions on the stand up paddling. Of course, I am paying attention with everything I've got, wouldn't you? <laughs> Jeremy, of course, has come out of the womb knowing everything. He tells me this all the time, and so he is not paying attention at all. He's looking around. La, la, la. I'm very focused on Gerard, specifically this part. <clears throat> well, where his hands were showing me that it's not this, it's arms straight. Yes. So that's how it happened. I, of course, succeeded. Jeremy fell off 7,000 times. I lost count after a while. I figured he was talking mostly about Diane. Obviously, I don't need it. Look at me. Anyway, this goes on 15, 20 minutes, something like that. I paid attention for two or three minutes. Like I said, I didn't need it. Let's get on the water. I'm a, I'm a here. little bit of an athlete. Oh, here we go. I don't go. know if you've noticed that. So okay, bye. If you want to skip right to the advanced training with me, that'd be fine. <laughs> Typical with men, they have their egos get in the way of learning. But we'll get by that because <laughs> Diane will help me teach you. No, no, she won't. <laughs> okay, I really found the stand-up paddling easy. I mean, I got in the water, got on my board in a very swan-like, graceful fashion, of course. And I just sailed along, very swan-like, I will say. Ah, of course, I'm hearing in the background, splash, splash, splash. Oh my gosh, it was Jonah back there just splashing around. So we get out on the water, and yes, I fell off in the first 30 seconds. Uh, it wasn't because I wasn't paying attention in training or anything like that. Uh, it's what the Floridians call a ghost hurricane. Uh, came over, hit me real quick, knocked me off my balance. 
I got back on the board and everything was great from that point forward. But watch out for those ghost hurricanes. Yeah, Jeremy, well, that's, uh, you know, that's a good question. He, you know, let's just say he tried hard. Um, but his issue was con uh, maintaining a stream of, con of concentration. And it got broken easily, and when it did, Jeremy was getting wet. But it provided good entertainment for the rest of us, and, you know, we do appreciate that in Jeremy. Okay. So I fell off a lot. Did Gerard or Diane fall off at all? No, they didn't. They stayed dry the whole day. Good for them, good for them. But in private conversations I had later with Gerard off camera, never recorded, Gerard said when I was calling him making the plans for all of this training, he had no idea that I was such a large, hulking man of stature. He said had he known that, he would have ordered in a special board, some kind of off-brand name called a boat. I, I don't know for sure. I'm not in that world. I don't speak surfer language. But had Gerard known and had he gotten in the boat board, I'm quite confident I could have hung with him much, much better. minutes and Jeremy gets half his ear cut off. Yep, that's what happens. I hear kind of some splashing and some oh, oh, oh. Turn around in my perfect form and sup all the way back to where he is because of course I was way out ahead. <clears throat> and sure enough, you know, to his defense, blood is squirting out of his ear. So there's that. Uh, <clears throat> but he says that a great white came out of the ocean, bit his ear off or something crazy. Oh, don't look for it now, Diane. It's already sailed away. It's, it's, it's gone, and I have been accepted into the tribe, and I am now the great white shark friend or something. Yeah, here's what really happened. Jeremy falls off his paddle again, splash, 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 and um, in all the jostling, it comes back, the paddle, which really was kind of a shame, and clocked him on the side of the So that's really what happened. Uh, however, I will go ahead and call him the great white for sure. I mean, he's white. The last and perhaps most tragic fall of the day uh, happened toward the end, uh, another ghost hurricane. Knocked me off my board, I went off as gracefully as I possibly could and went into very, very deep ocean waters where I was immediately attacked by a shark, bit me right on the ear. Uh, blood was everywhere, I thought I had lost the ear. Uh, I began wrestling this shark, which through my keen observation skills underwater, I ascertained to be a great white shark, probably 30, 35 feet long. Uh, we wrestled under the water for many, many hours. And after wearing him down, the two of us came to an understanding. We became friends, if you will. He accepted me into the tribe and called me the Great White. Everyone else thought I had just fallen off of the board and the board came back and hit my ear, which is totally not true. There is no way I'm going to fall off the board and it's going to hit me. I mean, Think about it, which is a more logical explanation? Great white shark or the board hitting me? It was a shark. Shark. So my friend Washboard has this dog. She's darling, her name is Kona, and she loves to do the sub paddling, you know, stand up paddling. She loves to jump on the board and she will just kind of casually walk from board to board and stand and she gets her all four legs situated. You'd think Jeremy could get two, but no. Anyway, Kona gets on the board and she even rode on mine. It was very fun and we just kind of drifted along and she would jump off and play with the dolphins. It was really fun. Fun, fun to watch her. And yes, she too never got wet, unless she wanted to jump off the board, that is, when she was pointing out dolphins or playing with them. So at the end of the day, I was the one that got the most wet, but it was a hot day. So in actuality, it worked out to my advantage. I was the one that had the most fun. We're continuing our stand-up paddling experience out in the lagoon and the weather starts to change, the wind starts to pick up, and the waters are becoming very choppy, plus they're shark infested. 
And Gerard suggests that we go back into the canal where the wind would be blocked. There's beautiful homes on both sides, big boats. And he seemed to think that we might get to see a manatee or two. So we sat down, Jeremy and I did, and we just rode our paddle around in the canal. And we saw manatees and people's beautiful backyards. And it was very peaceful. You got to check out the canal. Time to wrap up stand up paddling and uh, you know things haven't gone the best for me as, as far as at least appearances go. We've already discussed how being the wettest there was advantageous to me, uh, but that's apparently not the goal of stand up paddling. And with nobody buying my shark story reality actual event, it happened, I decided to set up a race between Gerard, Kona, Diane and me. Okay, first of all, Washboard is a professional stand-up paddler slash racer, so that's a given. Then there's me with my core strength and my yogi skills and my aerobic uh, lung ability. <clears throat> I'm pretty strong myself. And then you got the great white and, oh, we're going to race. I'm going to win. Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right, everybody, we've been out here uh, stand-up paddling now for the last couple of hours. Like six hours, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. I misunderstood. I thought the object was to fall off the board. Yeah, uh, in that well. regard, I'm winning 11 to nothing. Diane and Gerard have stayed on, on board the whole time. Duh. Um, but I figure now with our skills at probably a peak, it's time for a race. Now Gerard does this for a living. He uh, actually gets paid for it. So when I beat him, this is going to be very, very embarrassing. Here we go and again, people. And of course, people. Diane. I'm going to bet third. I'm like so, a swan. Jim here we go. It's race time in Cocoa eat. Beach. Stand up paddling. Woo! 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 Whatever that means. I don't know. I loved the stand-up paddling supping. I highly recommend it. You can see it all. We saw pelicans and fish, manatees, dogs, birds everywhere, beautiful rich homes. We waved at the rich people. You'll really like it. You got to do it. We had just an absolute fantastic time out on the water. As we're starting to head back in, the, the wind really did pick up and made it very difficult to stand up paddle back to the pier. So we got on our good friend Joe's boat. Uh, Reuben and I got to uh, reenact some great scenes from the Titanic. Uh, it was just a lot of fun, a great day out there on the water. And Gerard Middleton was a fantastic host along with his great companion, Kona. So if you're in the Cocoa Beach area, Sobe Surf and Stand Up Paddling with Gerard Middleton, look him up. After we were done stand-up paddling, uh, Diane was whining about needing a break. So we went back to Wakula Suites, and hotel where we were staying, and relaxed for a few hours, got something to eat. And then we hooked up with our good friends Joe and Ching McGulligan, who took us out to Thousand Islands, where we were able to kayak the rest of the day away. We're back with just down the road, and we're at Ramp Road Launch at Thousand Islands. We're getting ready to hop in some kayaks 
and uh, take a relaxing cruise and hopefully run into some manatees and other wildlife and just beautiful scenery. Before we do though, we want to thank Gerard Middleton. A lot of fun with Sobe Surf and Stand Up. It was, uh, it was relaxing, it was fun. Uh, we got real wet, we, now it got all we. fun. You were constantly falling off. I didn't even look back, people. Splash, splash, splash. Oh, that's Jeremy. Fell off again. <laughs> Did I mention when we get in the kayak, we're going to be in one kayak boat, just Diane and me. So I hope you don't get wet. Well, on this ride. really what I meant to say was the reason you fell off all the time is just because you're such a beefcake. That's and right. And you can't keep your balance. I wouldn't Very, either if I had all that. That's right. Now you're talking English. Oh, all right. Let's get in the boats and go find some manatees and uh, have some fun on the water. Okay. Now we're going. So Joe helps us launch a couple of kayaks and we start going down the river there. And the first thing we encounter are these huge mangrove trees that have kind of overgrown the river. And we were able in our kayaks to go right underneath them, beautiful arched mangroves, beautiful. And it was the end of the day and the sun was setting. It's just spectacular. While we were out kayaking, we were hopeful that we might get to see a manatee or two. Uh, but as it turns out, and I've got some scientists looking into this, the pitch of Diane's voice apparently hits a nerve within the manatee brain and sends them scattering all surrounding areas. Not coincidentally, however, most birds do come to the area because Diane sounds just like them. So there's that. We've gotten through the first tunnel here at Thousand Islands. And after navigating that successfully, we come out to this beautiful clearing. And right up here in the top of the tree is a gigantic pelican hanging on to a branch that doesn't look like it would hold much of anything, let alone a gigantic pelican. So just some of the sights and sounds that you get to see when you get out here off the beaten path, just down the road, in other words. Yep. Doing a little kayaking with the pelican. mangroves, we decided to stretch our sea legs and get into these wide open areas. And it was just beautiful. The sun was setting, the, the colors in the sky, on the water, all the birds coming in to nest. Just a, a great time out there and uh, lots of great sights to see. So I'm really glad we did it and if you ever go kayaking, make sure you get off the directed path a little bit, if you can, and get out and see a little bit more than just uh, what's in front of you. tip here from your Uncle Jeremy, if you ever do go kayaking, make sure you wear a wetsuit or maybe swimming trunks. Don't go with underwear and shorts. Water tends to come in from the sides from time to time, drips in from the paddles. It's not a good situation. Just causes a wet, tangled mess down there. 
Lots of chafing and rashes. It's not fun. Take my word. Oh, joy and rapture. I am able now to rename the Great White Captain Soggy Bottoms. Let's see, kayak, water, mm, water in the kayak. So we pretty much had a wet diaper the whole rowing experience. My diaper's wet. My, my bottom's wet. Water just came right into my booty. <laughs> All right, where's the helicopter to get us out of here? All right. Rowing. Kind of important when you're in a kayak, especially in one of these tandem setups where you've got a person in front of you, kind of work together as a team. Not so much with Diane. She's up there splish splashing in the water, getting me wetter. She has all the athletic ability of a life jacket. Like any great leader, I am a very good delegator. Clearly, you know, Jeremy was doing all the work, but I was delegating that work. So I had a nice ride. It was, it was good. Delegate, delegate. The kayaking is done, so we pull the kayaks up out of the water, start letting everything dry off, especially my rear end. And we all kind of notice the sun setting off to the side. And we all kind of rested and relaxed and watched the sun finish its descent. It was just uh, a perfect, perfect way to end the day. Jeremy, I just don't think we could have had much better of a day than this. It'd be hard to beat, I'll tell you that. Thanks to everyone that was a part of Just Down the Road today, Gerard Middleton and Sobe Surf and Stand Up Paddling, Joe and Ching McCulligan for helping us kayak on Thousand Island. We just had a great time. If you'd like more information on Just Down the Road or the things we did on today's show, check us out at justdownthe-road.net. For Diane Robertson, I'm Jeremy Wood from Cocoa Beach, Florida. This is Just Down the Road. We'll see you next time. Get that, Jesse? Yep.